welcome to Little Blue Mug Minutes, where we do things weird and quirky that don't necessarily fit into a category here on BookTube. Today's topic is things that make book nerds mad. I think most of you guys can relate to this because, you know, the world is full of pancakes cakes and they're just, they're, they're just really, really mean and selfish people. And we just gotta learn to live with them and we can just vent about our problems here. Without further ado, here are 10 things that really annoy book nerds. Number one is when you tell us what we read isn't literature. Since when is YA literature not literature? The genre is YA literature. Literature means words on a paper that are, that are made into a book, into a... What am I doing with my fingers? I don't even know. So one day I walk into class and um, I sit down and one of my friends and the teacher are sort of discussing a book. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to discuss a book. Oh my gosh, she was talking about fangirl. And I literally started fangirling right there in the classroom in front of everyone. And they all looked at me and thought I was nuts. But it was okay because I was like, oh my gosh, miss, fangirl is so fantastic. It's so cute and so adorable. And yeah, we bonded over that and that was really, really cute. And then halfway into the lesson, she was like, just because you like something doesn't necessarily mean it's good. And I was like, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. And then she sort of put this in there. See, I loved the book Fangirl, and just because I like it, it doesn't mean it's good literature. What you talking about? Rainbow Rowell wrote the book. She slaved over it, and she put all her heart and soul into it, and used all her beautiful creative abilities to create that wonderful story. So yeah, if I wrote a book, no matter what genre, no matter what age group it's geared towards, would be really upset if someone called my book not good literature. There's my rant. The next thing that makes book nerds extremely upset um, is when you tell us not to buy books. When someone tells me not to buy a book, that's just in my head, I'm like, okay then, guess I gotta go buy a book, because you know, I don't have enough. Number three relates to that completely. It's telling a book nerd that they have too many books. What? A book nerd can never have too many books. We collect them for a purpose, to be pretty on our shelves, to mark our accomplishments, and if we take away those books, it's like taking away our babies, taking away our child, taking away our children, okay? So scratch that. Do not ask a book nerd, do not tell a book nerd that they have too many books, okay? Thanks. Number four I think is a huge one, and that is finding out that your crush doesn't like reading, doesn't like anything to do with reading, hates books. Okay. <laughs> Don't like you anymore, sorry, bye. Or when they make fun of you for reading. Number five is probably my biggest, biggest thing that annoys me as a book nerd, and that is not working at a bookstore. Why the heck don't I work in a bookstore? What I mean by working is actually getting paid for helping customers and making sales. Um, huh. Cause I go in there all the time and just, for free, I make a lot of sales. Basically, what I do is I just wander around the YA section, and then when I see someone, it's like I'm the lion, and they're like my prey, and I just like go pounce on them, and I'm just like... So, uh, what are you looking for? What are you looking for reading? You know, I can help you out with a lot of things. Number six is when somebody asks you what your favorite book is. See, I can do that with my favorite movie. I just kind of try to keep it constant. I read a lot of books, okay? To figure out a favorite, I probably have like a top 20, and... I don't want to pick a favorite out of all of them. I know usually I do tell you guys, oh my God, this is my favorite book, but since we're book nerds, we kind of say like every recent book that's just made us oh, is like one of our favorite books, um, and I kind of overreact a little bit. You can't pick your favorite child, and these books are my children, so how do you expect me to pick a favorite child? This one bothers me so. <sighs> Number seven is when people see me reading, is that, is that like a sign for you to like start talking to me and interrupting me? And then you're all like, hey, what are you reading? I do not want to tell you what I'm reading. Most of the time I'm just like, can, can you can you read? Can I get back now? Can I, can I get back to reading now? Because this is what I'm reading. Do you see that? For, for future reference, um, if you see a person reading, do not interrupt them. They are not bored. They're not reading because they're bored. They're not you. They don't read because they're bored. They read for adventure and get away from you, so please stop it. Number eight, another thing that bothers us is when a book turns into a movie and then we go, oh no, let's hope, 
Let's hope that, let's pray that it's a good one. And then it sucks. Yeah, it, it's a really, really nerve-wracking for book nerds. If we really like this book and um, the movie sucks, then everyone hates this movie and everyone's giving all these bad reviews about it and it makes us feel so angry and annoyed. All of my family members and um, a lot of pansy cakes at school, um, they, they say, well, oh, yeah, that movie, it looks like The Hunger Games. Which leads me to um, number nine, comparing books to The Hunger Games. Yes, this gets its own category. That is not fair, okay? It is its own separate book with its own separate ideas. It's just of the same genre. Sure, it may have some similar concepts because nothing is original. Number ten, it's like the biggest thing out of probably all of them besides number five. Um, hmm. When someone spoils a book for it for you. Okay, this makes me super mad. And it's even worse when people tell you that you spoiled something when you didn't even know. Oh my god, because I hate when people spoil things for me and then you don't even realize you spoiled something for someone else and it's just like, I'm just in a corner like crying because I'm like, oh my god, I'm so sorry and trying to justify that I did not spoil it because I knew that it wasn't a spoiler. So the solution to this is, you gotta watch Christine's video about how to avoid spoilers. Um, it's pretty great. So yeah, those are a lot of things that make me angry and I know make a lot of other book nerds super super angry and just really annoy us. That is pretty much all I have to say in this little blue mug minute. It was a lot longer than a minute again. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure to check out this issue of mintmeg.com. Comment Pearl down below, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.